All right, so good morning, uh, or or whatever time it is you're watching. Uh, I wanted to talk about selling lumber. Well, really, how to make money at first. While uh, uh, when you first get a sawmill, the I mean, there's two ways, you know, primary ways to make money. Uh, that's selling lumber, or that's cutting for people. Uh, now, cutting for people is kind of tricky because you really want to have some experience before doing that. Um, I mean, certainly if you're cutting by the board foot, if you take a little bit longer, it doesn't really matter too much. But um, you don't want to mess up other people's logs, especially if they're nicer logs, hardwoods, uh, that sort of stuff, or if they need something special, um, it helps to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, if you're cutting by the hour, you definitely need to have some experience. Um, so you need to cut for yourself. Now, if you've got your own projects, you've got your own supply of log, I mean, you gotta find your logs, so that's one thing. But as far as getting rid of it, so if you got your, if you got end uses for the lumber, then that's great. You can get your experience that way. You know, use your, use the lumber on your sheds or your house or whatever you're doing. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't help pay for the mill. So paying for the mill, you'll wanna, think the quickest way is to sell lumber. Now as far as selling lumber, uh, it's my experience that variety helps out. Um, this is very much market dependent on what what's in your area and what people want to buy. And um, you're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. I can't help you with that. But I can say having variety is, is really good. And that's variety in species, but that's also thickness, width, lengths, um, sizes, quality, uh, all that stuff. So if you just put an ad on Craigslist, you're gonna get everyone from wanting big tabletops to little pieces of firewood. Um, so you've gotta manage everything in between. So obviously the slabs, I mean, that's the big, that's the, what everyone brags about, what everyone, uh, you know, likes, and, that, and that's where a lot of money is, is, is in the big slabs, the 30 inch wide, eight, 10, 12 foot long slabs, and that stuff, and that's great. Um, that's all good. You can only sell so much of that. Uh, generally, I found with slabs, people tend to not want oak or pine or poplars or anything like that. Generally, people getting slabs, they're wanting cherries and hickories and walnuts and maples and other stuff, less common uh, species. A um, couple things that uh, are less common or less known, uh, 4x4s are real common. I had, I had some good success selling 4x4s. Uh, pretty much everyone who bought a slab bought some 4x4s. Um, so it's just an easy thing to sell. And that can be oak. Um, you know, it's good, good to have oak. And then especially having rifts on, um, I'll, say, I'll say plain sawn or quarter sawn, I don't, I don't know what it is. but. Uh, have different grain orientations depending on what they're using with it and then you can have some um, You can also take that out of the center, you know center of the pith in the in the 4x4, but that's not going to be as good If you're trying to sell furniture stuff um, The pith is is pretty much not going to be good in, in most anything um, But you can sell it for a little cheaper somebody will buy it uh, as far as other other things mantles are good to have in stock um, people that are looking for mantles it's usually wives that are on Pinterest that see something and then they want something like that um, in their house. So you got if you get some kooky stuff, cut a mantle out of it. Um, six by eight, six by four by six, uh, somewhere in there. They usually only need to be six six or seven feet long. Um, you know, if you can get seven to eight foot stock, that's probably the best. But have a lot of variety. Uh, I mean, have some beams. Have some with live edge, have some with knots, have some clean, have, you know, have some gnarly ones, um, different different sizes, have some that are you know, 12, 14 inches wide, so something like that. I think it needs to at least be four inches thick. Um, and that can have the pith in it, that can have cracks in it, that can have knots and checks, and that can be otherwise ugly. Um, and that can be out of logs that otherwise couldn't be made into anything else. So cut those when you can. Um, and have those available because uh, when somebody wants to come by for a mantle they're not gonna 
at least in my experience, they don't tend to custom order a mantle. Um, it's not a cut to order thing. They want to see something unique. They want to go shopping. You know, they they want to they want to pick through a selection of stuff. So have a selection of stuff available for for mantles. Um, as far as other stuff, I found good luck selling um, little like three by three, maybe 12, 12 inches or twenty four inches long. Um, I, I tried to keep 24 inch long pieces, three by three, 24 inch long pieces in a bunch of different variety when I was when I was selling lumber and I could sell those. Those would either be like salt and pepper shakers uh, or legs for a small uh, coffee table. So they can be a couple different uses. Uh, also having having some fin finished products if you got the means to do it, getting little, little cross cut. Um, I always did it in cedar. I've seen it in walnut. You gotta kind of be picky, but where you take the branches and you cut Cut the little cookies for for coasters. Um, you know, throw it in the oven, kiln dry it in the oven, um, sand it, put a coat of polyurethane on it. You know, sell them for 15 or 20 bucks for a set of four. Um, those, you know, obviously your your furniture makers aren't aren't after that stuff. But um, when they come with their wives, the wives very well could be. Uh, I've sold a number of those. Um, and they could just be for themselves. It's something cool, or you know, hey, oh, we're going to a so and so's birthday party next week. This is an easy thing done. Uh, same thing with having cheese plates, and you know, if you have a wood lathe, you can do whatever little trinkets. Um, the key is, it was pretty common for me when I was selling lumber. It was pretty common for um, for the the guy. I mean, mostly it was the guy. And then they brought their wives, but there, <laughs> there was a few women that, that brought their husbands. So um, it's not always the case, but uh, uh, it's not uncommon for them to bring their significant other out. Uh, at least for for me, when I was doing it, it wasn't uncommon. Um, so having a variety of stuff helps out a lot. Uh, having small small pieces, uh, I wouldn't say pin blanks necessarily, but um, you know smaller pieces of wood that. People can do little projects with. Uh, I gotta watch this cat. She'll just come up to me and claw. She'll just. Um, scares me. Um, little short pieces, you know, maybe uh, half inch or, or five eighths inch thick stuff that's, you know, four feet long, you know, small stuff like that. So if somebody wants to build a little jewelry box or, or whatever, they don't need to buy a big. Uh, a whole lot of wood um, so it, it makes it easy on them and you with that you can sell it at a higher board rate price a higher price per volume and you can also make that out of stuff that otherwise couldn't be made into um, full-length lumber so like if you end up having to cut off let's say you're cutting cutting a log and you see you know uh, nails in the middle of it and then what are you gonna do? You know, one thing you can do if you if you hit nails, you can cut that, um, cut it out. You know, if you got a log and there's a nail in the middle, you can just cut this way and this way, and instead of an eight foot, you have a four foot and a four foot, or you know, a four foot and a three foot, or whatever. And so with those pieces, now you can make smaller, um, you know, smaller pieces of wood that could be used for wood turners or small projects and and so forth. The other important thing is take credit cards. Don't, I don't care. Don't don't give me any of this crap about cash and no blah, blah 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 blah. Take credit cards. Cash is great. Have credit cards available. I've lost track. I don't know how many, how much extra sales I've made strictly because I take credit cards. The guy will show up with 200 bucks cash. He'll start looking around. Oh hey, this is cool and all, but hey, I only got 200 bucks. I take credit cards. Oh, well. Now I can go buy a whole bunch of other crap, and he leaves with $800 worth of stuff, strictly because I take credit cards. Um, it opens the door. You can charge them 3%, charge them the fee. Uh, Square, PayPal, I use QuickBooks now. All those people take credit cards. Make it easy on the customer to buy your stuff. Um, I, I didn't, there was a couple times I charged the fee. I just stopped charging the fee. I'll just eat the 3%. It's not that big of a deal. You know, when you're selling lumber for three bucks a board foot, I don't care. You know, you, I don't care about three uh, percent, especially when the guy's buying, you know, 
$400 more lumber than he would have otherwise, that's that's fine. That's the cost of doing business. Uh, if that's going to break it, you, you need to make your prices higher. You need to price that in and assume that somebody is going to pay with a credit card and, and deal with it. That's the cost of doing business. Um, folks my age, I rarely carry cash. The only time I've carried, the only reason I carry cash now is because people come and pay me in cash. I have no other reason to carry cash. People my age do not carry cash. It's just not how our generation works. So take credit cards. Uh, I hesitate with personal checks, um, but I've taken them. Every time someone's asked, I've taken. I've never not taken a personal check. I've never had an issue. Make you make it easy on the customer. Uh, I've never been burned, but sometimes you just gotta you just gotta take the chance with that. Uh, as far as construction lumber, that's a little more tricky because you have to be cheap, um, and that means you either have to you either have to work for not much money or you have to be pretty efficient. Um, because if you're trying to sell construction lumber, and I'm talking more like maybe let's say one by eight, one by twelve, like for siding or something like that, um, or maybe if you're doing two by four, two by sixes for a shed, um, you got to be cheap. It, it, it's all that's what it comes down to I mean you're gonna if you're selling two by fours about the best you can get is maybe 45 or 50 cents a board foot for it because you can go to Lowe's and get it I mean normal price is about 70 or 75 cents a board foot but they can you can get them on sale for 60 cents 55 or 60 cents I think it when they go on sale and that's kiln dried and surface four sides you're not selling a kiln dried surface four sides product you're selling a rough sawn green product um, so it doesn't have as much value <laughs> as the kiln dried product. It's a different product. So at, at this moment, assuming you're just starting off, you're just, you're just trying to, um, sell lumber. Uh, this is what you're selling. So uh, you're going to be selling it for 45 cents a board foot, maybe, maybe 40 cents because it's green. Um, so how much time or what is the, what do those logs cost you and how much time does it take to uh, to cut it um, not to say you're not gonna make money but you know what's your hourly rate it's up to you so that's the caution with construction lumber and that goes with one by sixes one by twelves two by fours two by sixes any of that any of the construction stuff um, Beams, however, you can get above six by six. Up to six by six is usually uh, is usually in that 60, 70 cents a board foot. When you get into the anything eight inch, um, six by eight, six by twelve, eight by eights, anything bigger than that, um, then you can start to get into the, selling it for ninety cents to a dollar a board foot. And this is the prices that I'm familiar with. Your market very well could be different, so you have to do your own research. Um, but you can get a higher price for it um, and market that's purely a supply and demand thing so the the labor is the same whether I'm in North Carolina or Florida or or Washington or Canada or wherever um, it's the same amount of work to cut a 2x4 the fuel is the same pretty much the same cost uh, blades are the same it's the, it's the same cost I don't I, I don't necessarily understand why um, you know, some two by fours are 45 cents a board foot here and some are 30 cents there. Um, uh, I mean, other than supply and demand. So I, I can't tell you on supply and demand because that's, that's in your local area and like within 20 or 30 miles of your local area. So anyway, you're going to have to dial that, that in for yourself, but I just want to say have variety, have a lot of different stuff to, um, to offer people. And that's, um, you know, lumber, but also finished products. And if you get into to trinkets and doodads and, you know, clocks and whatnot, then that's fine. Um, you're also going to have people wanting, wanting free stuff basically. And, you know, sometimes that's fine. You know, you, you may or may not want to mess with that. If they're wanting, wanting to pick through your firewood stack or your sawdust, you know, if somebody wants sawdust, they can just have it. That's fine. If they want to pick through the firewood stack, if it's pine, I'll just give it to them. If it's, uh, even if it's oak, I'll probably just give it to them. I used, well now, 
I, I, I just give it to them here if they do. I don't really get it too much. But in Savannah, I would get it more. And I would have, you know, more walnut and cherry and hickory and stuff like that um, in the cutoffs. And I might sell it to them for five bucks for a piece or, or something like that. And that's not that the piece is worth five bucks. It's just the time it took me to meet up with the guy. And, you know, it's just give me five bucks so I, to, to pay for talking to you is kind of what uh, the way I saw it. Um, so, uh, any rate, uh, make it easy on the customers. Give them a lot of variety. Uh, any, the better way you can store the, the lumber, um, having it in a stack like you see here is not the best way. So, it's pretty common, like that stack in the bottom, you know, there's cherry on the top, but then there's hickory on the bottom. And for instance, if somebody wants some hickory slabs, we gotta go through all that cherry to get to the hickory. So that doesn't make it easy on them. Some people don't care. You may not care about going through the stack, but a lot of people care. You know, don't want to do that. They may not want to spend the time to unstack it. They may feel bad for ha making you spend the time to unstack it. Um, so that's going to deter people by seeing the lumber that they think they may want down there. So if you can get it organized better to have you know, all your slabs uh, in one shot, which obviously ain't gonna happen. Um, the best way I've found is to, if you're doing slabs, to try to stand them up upright in a, in a building or something. Um, but that's difficult, so just leave that as a, uh, as a goal to get to. Um, but just know that that's going to deter people. Um, so it just, it is what it is. Um, but if you're just starting off, you're just trying to sell lumber for, uh, for the first time, you, you gotta you gotta just try, um, and then I would also tend to lean on the cheaper side of life. So if you think you can sell something for two bucks a board foot, you know sell it for a buck fifty. Um, try to try to sell it cheap, and then when when the guy comes and you know you say hey I'm just getting into this, uh, you know I'm, I realize I'm selling this for for lower than market market price. I'm taking a loss with that, but I'm trying to get my name out, trying to build build the business and so on and um, you know they'll understand they'll appreciate the discount and if you if you have a good product they'll come back um, so uh, so yeah also if you're selling green lumber make sure to educate you know make sure that the customer knows um, what he, what they're buying uh, you know a lot, a lot of the woodworkers are very familiar with it but not everybody is um, so that's something you don't want to do is sell a piece of green lumber and then somebody thinking it's good to go, not realize, you know, not knowing what's involved with it, goes to make a table with it and then all of a sudden it, it cracks and bows and bends and breaks and all that time, time and money they spent into it is wasted because they didn't dry it or acclimate it properly. Not your fault, it's their fault, but they're going to blame you. So you need to cover your ass and you need to tell them at least give them the disclaimer that hey this is green lumber it's you know it is what it is it's still got to dry and cure depending on what you're doing you know blah 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 you need to do your own you know you tell them you, you put it on them and you tell them you're getting a discount and you tell them you're selling it cheaper and you put it on them to figure it out um, but that just covers you so that they you know don't come back and blame you because you warned them so uh, any anyway, rate I hope this was helpful I hope uh, you know, if you're looking at, if you just bought a sawmill, or you're looking at, or or you're thinking about buying one, um, that, that this is this is helpful for you. Uh, you know, a lot of the details are, are market driven. You know, what who else is doing this on your on your area? Craigslist is a good resource. Um, just going to the different stores and what you know, the woodworking stores if there are any. Um, that's a good resource. Talking to other woodworkers, sometimes there's, you know. Uh, woodworking groups and stuff like that on Facebook or whatever um, so you just kind of got to do your research in your area and, and see who else is there who's buying who's who's selling what how much all that stuff um, and yeah best of luck to you thanks